We are the only species in the world with an obesity and chronic disease epidemic. And we're the only species in the world with ultra processed food. We are literally in America eating ourselves to death. All right, get this. Today, we are diving deep into our body's hidden energy reserves. And you know what? It's not just about the food we eat. Oh, absolutely not. It's about how we treat ourselves throughout the day. It's a whole lifestyle thing, you know? It really is. We're talking chronobiology, those powerhouse mitochondria, and honestly, the amazing connection between sunlight, food, and honestly, feeling alive. You sent over this fascinating transcript from Dr. Casey Means. She's a Stanford-trained physician right. and health expert, Sean Stevenson. And let me tell you, Get ready for some serious aha moments. You know, what always gets me is how we think of energy as this thing, you know, out there. Yeah, yeah. But this this deep dive, it really highlights how much comes from within. It's like we're carrying around this, like, internal power plant, but we have no idea how to actually, like, you know, operate it. Most of us don't. Most of us don't. And speaking of which, did you know that 93%, a whopping 93% of American adults are considered metabolically dysfunctional? It's a staggering statistic, isn't it's it? It's crazy. And honestly, it's at the core of so many health issues we're dealing with today. It all comes down to those mitochondria, you know, the tiny energy generators inside our cells. Right, right. They're like these little suns converting food into, like, usable energy. Okay, so our internal power grid is struggling. Then Dr. Means, she uses this intense phrase. She's like, we're literally eating ourselves to death. Yeah, she doesn't sugarcoat it, does she? No, she does not. What's okay. going on there? That's a pretty intense statement. She's talking about all this ultra processed foods, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. They're everywhere. And they're basically nutritional deserts. Okay. They don't have what our mitochondria need to thrive. So like no fuel for the fire. Exactly. It's like trying to, I don't know, fuel a high performance waste car with like watered down gasoline. Yeah, it's just not going to work. Not going to get you very far. So we're filling our tanks with the wrong stuff and then yeah. our body's like, Help me. Yeah. Tries to compensate, you know, sends those hunger signals like eat more, eat more. I need something. But it's that vicious cycle. It is because we're not giving it what it needs. It's like our bodies are just stuck in this like hangry mode all the time. No wonder we feel drained. <laughs> we're running on fumes. Nah. And then we're like, why can't I focus or why am I gaining weight? Exactly. It cool. all ties in. OK, so ditch the junk food, start putting in the premium fuel makes sense. But where does sunlight fit into all of this? Because I know it's good for vitamin D. Right. But Dr. Means and Sean Stevenson, they're saying it's doing a lot more than just, you know, strengthening our bones. Way more. Sunlight is essential for energy. Oh. Oh, yeah. Dr. Means, she's all about chronobiology. OK. Which is basically how our bodies work on that 24 hour cycle. Right. And guess what plays a huge role in regulating that cycle? Light. So it's like the melatonin sleep connection. Exactly. Like, does it really affect our energy that much? I mean, I'm yeah. pretty good about getting my eight hours. Even if you're a sleep rock star, there's more to it. OK. Get this. The average American, they spend a measly 7% of their time outdoors. 7%? Are you serious? 7%. We're basically an indoor species now. That's kind of depressing. It is. And our bodies, they don't know what's going on. Mm. We're bathing ourselves in artificial light all the time. 7% is shockingly low. Okay, so what's so bad about artificial light? Isn't all light kind of, you know, created equal? I wish it were that simple. Yeah. Our bodies, they thrive on rhythm and routine. Okay. They're designed to respond to those natural cycles of daylight and darkness. Okay. When we mess with that, with yeah. artificial light, you know, from our phones, our computers, even just overhead lights. Right. It throws the whole system off balance. So it's like we're living in a perpetual state of jet lag. Exactly. Our bodies are getting all these mixed signals about when to work and when to rest. No wonder we're tired all the time. Right. Hormones go haywire. Sleep quality takes a nosedive. Even our metabolism takes a hit. It's like a domino effect. <laughs> okay, so more natural light. Got it. But there's more to this energy puzzle, right? What about food? Dr. Means, she mentions how food, it's not just calories, it's information. Yes. It's literally building and instructing our bodies at a cellular level. It's amazing when you think about it. It is. She compares it to 3D printing ourselves with every meal, which I love. That's a powerful way to look at it. It is, because it makes you think about, you know, what am I actually putting into my body? It makes you think twice about that bag of chips, right? It really does. Would you build a house with 
like flimsy materials and expect it to last? No, definitely not. Same goes for our bodies. We need quality building blocks. So if we're constantly putting in junk, we're basically building a like a shoddy version of ourselves. It's like every meal, you have this opportunity to either upgrade your internal software right. or install a virus. Okay, I'm going to think about it like that from now on. The quality of food, it directly impacts our cells, tissues, everything. Our energy, our mood, everything. It's all connected. It's all connected. Okay, so premium fuel for our bodies, check. But it's not just what we eat. It's hey. also about when we eat. Right. Exactly. Dr. Means, she talks about meal timing and respecting our like internal clocks. Is she saying we all need to be on some crazy strict eating schedule? Not exactly. It's more about... You know, working with your body's natural rhythm. Okay. Like, think about late night snacking. Okay. That really throws a wrench in the system. Really? Oh, yeah. It disrupts our natural, you know, day-night cycle. We're designed <laughs> to eat during the day and then, like, rest and repair at night. That makes sense. It's like hitting the gas pedal right when your body is trying to, you know, park for the night. Exactly. But what about cravings, though? Because those always seem to hit at the worst times. Well, Dr. Means has this really interesting perspective on cravings. Okay. What is it? She says, instead of seeing them as, you know, the enemy, right. we should view them as messages from our bodies. Okay. Like our cells are trying to tell us something. So instead of giving in to that, you know, late night cookie craving, right. I should be asking myself, like, what is my body actually needing right now? Exactly. Maybe you're dehydrated or maybe your body's low on magnesium, chromium, who knows? So it might not even be about food. Sometimes not. Our bodies are smart but they can only work with what we give them. Right. It's about paying attention to those signals. So that bag of chips might actually be a cry for, like, broccoli. You never know. It's about listening to your body. This is blowing my mind. So how do we, like, decipher those messages? What are some, like, common cravings? And what could they actually be telling us? Well, let's say you're craving something sweet. Yeah, okay. Could be you just need to hydrate. Okay. Try drinking a big glass of water first. See if that helps. Okay salty snacks. Your body might be low on minerals, things like sodium, potassium, magnesium. Got it. Try snacking on some nuts, seeds, even a small piece of dark chocolate. Oh, I like the sound of that last one. Right. It's about making those healthier swaps. So it's like learning a new language. In a way, yeah. But instead of words, it's nutrients. I like that. Dr. Means also talks about something she calls finding awe in food. Yes. What is that? It's about shifting our mindset around food. You know, yeah. going from just mindlessly eating to actually having a mindful experience. Okay. Slow down, savor each bite. Think about where your food came from. Like it started as the sun's energy and now it's here on your plate. Wow. I love that. Appreciating the journey. It's so true. We often just like shovel food down. Right. No time to even taste it. Exactly. Mindful eating. It's about engaging all your senses, you know. Notice the colors, the textures, the aromas, the flavors. So put down the phone, turn off the TV. Exactly. Be present with your meal. No more scrolling through social media while eating my salad, huh? Maybe not. But hey, it's all about progress, not perfection. Right. Small steps. Exactly. Start by setting aside dedicated time for meals, even if it's just 15 minutes. Okay. That's doable. And then really focus on chewing your food thoroughly. Put your fork down between bites. Those are great tips. I like that, making small changes, not trying to overhaul everything at once. Exactly. Okay, so we talked about sunlight, mindful eating, honoring our body's clock. Dr. Means also talks about processed foods, right? And how we should choose whole unprocessed foods whenever we can. Right, that's always the goal. Which I yeah. think we can all agree on. Of course. But honestly, let's be real. It's almost impossible to avoid processed foods completely these days. It's everywhere. It is. So what's her advice for navigating those like those tricky situations where you can't avoid it? She's all about being a conscious consumer. What does that mean? It means doing your homework, reading labels carefully. Okay. Don't just glance at them. Really pay attention. Like serving sizes, added sugars, those sneaky unhealthy fats, artificial ingredients, all of it. So like... Become a food detective. Exactly. The fewer ingredients, the better. Okay. And look for ingredients that you recognize. You know, if you can't pronounce it, maybe don't eat it. That's a good rule of thumb. It's crazy how much sugar and stuff they hide in food. It's true. Knowledge is power, though. Right. The more you know about what's in your food, the easier it is to make healthy choices. 
So it's not about deprivation. It's about like empowerment. Exactly. Choosing yeah. foods that make you feel your best. That's what it's all about. Right. And fueling your body with the good stuff. Yes. Crowding out those processed foods with whole real foods that actually nourish your body. Think of it like upgrading your fuel source. <laughs> Instead of putting that low grade gasoline in your car, you're filling it up with like that high octane fuel. I like that analogy, trading in that old clunker for a sleek sports car. Exactly. And when you fuel your body with that premium fuel, you have more energy for everything, you know, for the things you love, for showing up in your life, for experiencing that vibrant health that we're all after. Vibrant health. I love that. It's not just about being, you know, free from disease. It's about feeling alive, energized. Okay. We've covered sunlight mindful eating, choosing those whole foods. Dr. Means also mentions this fascinating idea that we are made of sunlight, which sounds kind of out there. It does, doesn't it? But she backs it up with some pretty interesting science. Can you elaborate on that a bit? Absolutely. Yeah. She's talking about how energy flows through all life on Earth. Okay. And it all starts with the sun. Plants, they capture the sun's energy through photosynthesis. Yeah. And then they convert it into a form they can use to grow. Mm. And then we eat plants. Right. Or we eat animals that have eaten plants. Right. And we're essentially absorbing that stored solar energy. Wow. So we really are all running on solar power. In a way. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty amazing. It is. But the connection goes even deeper than that, right? It does. Dr. Means explains how our mitochondria... The energy powerhouses? Exactly. They're actually distant relatives of the chloroplasts found in plants. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, both of these structures, they play this crucial role in converting light energy into usable energy. So not only are we made of sunlight, right. but we also have these tiny suns inside our cells. Hmm. We do. Working tirelessly to keep us energized. It's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it, right? It's amazing. This connection to nature, it's so important. And when we take care of ourselves, when we get enough sunlight, eat nutrient-dense foods, live in sync with our natural rhythms, we're honoring that connection. So we're basically plugging ourselves into the Earth's natural energy grid. Exactly. By living in harmony with these natural cycles. Exactly. When we work with our bodies and not against them, right. we tap into this incredible potential for health and vitality. It's like we've had it all backwards. You really have. Trying to outsmart our bodies with these like crazy diets and quick fixes. Right, right. When we should be working with them. Exactly. Tapping into that like inner wisdom. Our bodies are incredibly intelligent. They are. We just got to learn to trust them again. And respect them. Yeah. Dr. Mina, she talks about that a lot, you know, really honoring our bodies. She's big on self-compassion. Yeah. Our bodies, they're amazing. They're resilient. They're constantly striving for balance, for healing. But we work against them, right? We yeah. beat ourselves up about food, about exercise, about sleep. We're so hard on ourselves. And it's just this cycle of guilt and shame it is yeah. and it doesn't help anything right yeah, at all. it's like we're in this toxic relationship with our own bodies and dr means she's like shift the narrative exactly see your body as an ally not the enemy okay so instead of like you know mentally whipping myself for that extra slice of pizza maybe i should be thanking my body for letting me know i enjoyed it exactly and then moving on right it's about finding that balance you know mm -hmm. enjoyment and nourishment without the judgment listen to your body Okay, I like that. So curiosity over criticism. Yes. What if we just like approached our health with a sense of playfulness, experimentation? I love that because it's about discovering what works for you. Yeah. What gives you energy? What kind of movement feels good? What helps you unwind? Everyone's different. So it's like we become scientists of our own bodies. I love that analogy. Gathering data, running experiments, optimizing. Exactly. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's about what works for you. It's so true. I love this idea of like personalized health. Me too. It's so much more empowering than just following some rigid set of rules. It's about listening to that inner wisdom and creating a lifestyle that truly like supports you, nourishes you. And when you make that shift you know, from external validation to that mm -hmm. internal knowing, yeah. that's where the magic happens. It's like we unlock all this energy and vitality that's been there all along. Yeah, it's always been there. Wow, this has been eye-opening. I don't know about you, but I am ready to, like, take my health into my own hands now. That's amazing. <laughs> so as we wrap up this deep dive, what's one final thought, you know, one thing you hope people take away from this conversation about energy? Your body is your greatest ally. It's on your side always. Listen to it trust it, and it will guide you back to that place of balance, vitality, radiant health. 
I love that. Your body's got your back. Thanks for joining us on this electrifying deep dive, everyone. We'll catch you next time for another adventure in knowledge.